one of the most prominent features in Escape from Tarkov is the complex weapon modding. This extremely detailed system allows you to experiment with a wide variety of available attachments and fit your gun to fulfill the desired role. Welcome to Gun Nut. Throughout history, there haven't been many cases where a certain weapon was restricted of use in a conflict. In today's episode, the AS Val. One of the key aspects of every special forces unit is stealth, to operate with as little sound and flash from their weapons as possible. With the first generation Spetsnaz arsenal including no more than AK and AKM variants fitted with quick detachable sound suppressors and loaded with special subsonic ammunition. However, this wasn't enough to fit the needs of Russian special forces. First half of the 1980s, the development of a new special automatic rifle began, a system featuring an integrated suppressor for clandestine operations. Designed at the Central Research Institute of Precision Engineering in the Moscow region city of Klimovsk, with the lead designer, Pyotr Serdyukov. It was produced by the two arms planned in limited quantities and with a single purpose to be as effective against armor as possible. The weapon entered service in 1987 with the codename Shaft. Primarily issued to special forces and top-level security groups including the Federal Security Service or the FSB and OMON, a special purpose police unit to name a few, the VAL quickly became the preferred weapon of Spetsnaz operators. While extremely suitable for urban combat, the initial idea behind the VAL's deployment was the use in reconnaissance or sabotage operations deep behind enemy lines. But besides the integrated suppressor and a relatively simple design, what is it that makes the VAL special? In the 1940s, a team of supposed 27 unknown members began designing a new type of 9mm bullet based on the Russian 7.62x39mm round but with an expanded neck. The idea was to create a subsonic cartridge for suppressed firearms that had more power, range and penetration than handgun as well as some rifle cartridges. No less than 40 years later, the design was finally finished, making it the world's longest developed modern bullet. The infamous 9x39. The weight of the new 9mm round was 250 grain, double that of the normal 7.62x39. And to make it even better, it was subsonic. Being that the 5.45x39mm cartridge for the AK-74 lacked sufficient bullet weight for acceptable energy at subsonic velocities, ironically, the new 9x39 round was a success. In the wake of Russia's intervention of the Syrian Civil War, the 9x39 cartridge, along with the AS Val and other accompanying weapons chambered in this caliber, were restricted of use by the Vladikavkaz 9x39mm subsonic round restriction certificate due to the cartridge being deemed unethical and overpowered. Although the public does not have any further insight on the matter, it is unknown if it will continue to stay in effect. A common misconception about this very cartridge revolves around it primarily being a 9mm round, therefore often confused with the 9x19 Parabellum, mainly used in a wide variety of handguns and the well-known MP5 submachine gun. The best example is an incorrect rendition of the VSS Venturas in PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, being that it's chambered in 9x19 and sadly performs as a BB gun versus armor. So, what kind of penetrating capability does 9x39mm round actually have? While certainly not the only one, the SP6 variant has a hardened metal armor piercing core and can penetrate 2mm of steel at 500 meters or 30 layers of Kevlar at 200 meters. At 100 meters, however, it penetrates 8mm or 0.31 inch of steel while retaining enough power to neutralize the soft target behind it. In Escape from Tarkov, there are two variants to choose from the SP5, a conventional lead core FMJ bullet developed for accuracy and in combination with the VSS Venturas. With the damage stat of 68, penetration value of 25 and usefulness meta value of 149, the SP5 is a very good choice for a stealthy playstyle and when going against level 2 or level 3 armor. The SP6 on the other hand has slightly higher penetration value, is a bit faster around and can penetrate level 4 body armor in merely 2 shots. 
Both SP5 and SP6 do not seem all that powerful on paper, especially when compared to the 7.62x51M61 round or 5.56x45M995, both of which have higher stats. That is until you give the ASVAL a try. The fact that the round is subsonic allows for a stealthy approach in any situation, being that the round does not break the sound barrier and cause a sonic boom. Even with sound suppressors equipped in their weapons, the majority of players tend to stay away from using subsonic ammunition, mainly due to the lack of performance over range. And while the sound of the bullet leaving the chamber is suppressed, the inadequate velocity of the round will produce the infamous snap sound, potentially giving away your position. Automat Special Val or AS Val is a selective fire, gas operated assault rifle with a rotating bolt. The weapon can be acquired from level 4 prep war, for 2 GM counters and 7 MREs. Keep in mind that this is prone to change as the development of the game progresses. The VAL is a top tier assault rifle in the Tarkov arsenal, with one of its best features being the ability to virtually melt armor. With a very high fire rate of 900 rounds per minute, and with the use of the SP6 ammunition, it is extremely effective in close range combat. The stock valve has minimal recoil, so even with a high rate of fire, the bullet groupings stay clumped up even with no effort to control it. As with almost all AK variants, the first shot does have a noticeable, yet slightly lower vertical kick, after which the recoil pattern settles in provided you're not moving. But considering that most of the time, you will be shooting in fully automatic mode while moving side to side, a slight downward pull is all you're gonna need to fully control the recoil of the valve. However, the recoil is practically non-existent if you're firing from a crouched position, even more so when proned out. But overall, the recoil of the valve feels very comfortable in almost any situation, and is more than easy to get used to. It has a reload speed of 4.22 seconds, tactical reload speed of 2.53 seconds, while fast reloading takes 2.31 seconds. However, one of the biggest disadvantages of this weapon is its ineffectiveness and range. As it originally was not designed for long-range engagements, don't rely on it to perform too well past approximately 75 meters. Both the bullet drop and the damage falloff is very high, so even if you decide to fit it with a long-range optic, it will mainly play a role in spotting. Having a long-range optic such as a PSO-1 can help you in certain situations, and can be very useful on maps such as Customs and Shoreline. But before we talk more about different setups, as well as the accompanying playstyles, let's take a look at the modding options. The VAL is a fairly simple gun, and supports only a handful of attachments. As far as the stocks go, there are a few options you can choose from, although the default skeletonized folding stock decreases the recoil the most. You can replace the pistol grip with a rotor 43 pistol grip and a buffer tube, obtainable from level 2 mechanic. This will allow you to fit the VAL with a different stock, such as the MFT bus, GL shock, or MOE carbine stock with a rubber butt pad for additional ergonomics. And of course, swag. As far as the magazines go, you have three options. Standard 10 round VSS magazine, 20 round or a 30 round magazine for the SR3M. No need to say what would be the best choice, but more on that later. The TOS 6B29M mount can be purchased from level 3 skier and can be mounted on the integrated suppressor, allowing you to fit the valve with a foregrip and a tactical device. Or you know, two tactical devices. If you're a fan of old-fashioned reflex sights, you can either attach an OKP-7 or the good old Cobra sight, however the latter is not a very good choice for broad daylight, as the sun glare tends to make it hard to properly see the reticle. Both Pilat and Cobra mount are a good choice, as they offer more versatility with not only reflex sights, but also long-range optics. A bit more modern approach would be something like the Vortex UH-1 holographic sight. The PSO-1 and the NSPUM nightscope can both be mounted directly on the receiver, and the B3 combo mount will allow the installation of a canted sight. But of course, all of this will depend on what kind of setup you're actually going for. Furthermore, what map you will play on. The B3 combo mount, available from level 3 mechanic, can be fitted with reflex sights, a tactical device, but not a foregrip. To be able to attach all of them, this is the setup that you want. A TOS mount for the foregrip, Axiom Cobra or a pilot mount with a hammer scope and a delta point reflex sight, Depending on your wallet and the actual time you're willing to invest in modding the VAL, you can also go for something like this. However, don't underestimate a simple setup such as this one. It may look cheap, and it is, but for an aggressive playstyle and swift reaction time, it's more than enough to get the job done. For small sized maps, you can simply use it with iron sights. 
Of course, playing on bigger maps will require additional awareness, and always keep in mind that this rifle performs best at close range. So do your best to stay out of sight and preferably stay one step ahead, but by all means, don't shy away from picking a fight. Using the Val is not cheap. On the contrary, 200 SP6 rounds will cost you around 42,000 rubles, and if there is one thing you need to be wary of, it's running out of ammo in the middle of a firefight. Having at least 6 pair 20 round magazines is always a good choice, and this goes without saying, 30 round magazines would do even better, although they are currently obtainable as a trade for 5 pliers. Being that all barter items are prone to change over time, the 30 round SR3M magazines are indeed valuable. As a solo player, your biggest obstacle will be squad encounters. In a 1v1 situation in which you have good positioning and decent aim, the SP6 combined with the Val's high fire rate will neutralize the enemy almost instantly, but as soon as you get jumped by one or two more enemies immediately after, is exactly when those extra mags will play a big part in getting out alive, simply because the Val burns through 20 rounds in no time. There's no need to say that you'd want to stay away from loading your mags in mid-game, and besides carrying more mags, you can also bring in an ammo box with fully loaded extra ones, and simply switch if needed. Being aggressive with the Val is key for being successful in firefights, even when outnumbered. When engaging soft targets, the subsonic rounds will play a big part, as your opponent will potentially have trouble locating where the shots are coming from, giving you the much needed edge, provided they don't hear the actual discharge of the gun. As far as your equipment goes, the extra mobility is far more important for a playstyle suited for this gun, so the gazelle armor would be a perfect choice. And if you want your target acquisition to be on point, stay away from those dirty visors. Expensive, powerful, and intimidating to use. You should not think of using this rifle as a risk, but don't take it for granted either. Sometimes, we tend to do better with low tier equipment simply because there is no barrier when trying to make a play and no fear of losing anything. Instead, try looking at it as an investment as it will be easier to get through certain situations, potentially improve in PvP and of course, get more gear. After all, it's not the weapon that plays the game, it's you. Thank you for watching and see you next time.